Chapter 5. John sees the book sealed with seven seals that no man on earth could open, and the twenty-four elders sitting around the throne clothed in white, with crown of gold upon their heads. The scroll. I the news bearer John, son of Zebedee and Salome, saw in the right hand of the Anunnaki Elohim Melchizedek, leader of the deities, supreme deity, who sat on the seat, a little scroll, the mother of all scriptures, from the Enuma Elish, Gilgamesh epics, Atra Hasis, on one scroll inscribed within and on the back side, meaning it was opened from the left to right, and it is sealed with seven seals which are, the first seal, El Suhuf, the pure pages, Kodman, Adam, Zakar, received ten pages, the book of life, revealed in the year 3126 BCE, Sheth, Sheath, Seth, received 50 pages, the book of sin, revealed in the year 3776 BCE, Aadapha, Kanok, Idris, Enoch, received 30 pages, the book of time, revealed in the year 3284 BCE, Abram, Abraham, Ibrahim, received 10 pages, the book of generation, revealed in the year 1958 BCE. They are a set of divine scriptures of Eli, Thehos, the Most High, by which man was commanded to live. El Suhuf is mentioned in El's Quran as honored pages, El's Quran 2413, Original Order 8013, Guarded Tablets, El's Quran 8522, Original Order 2722, First Pages, El's Quran 8718, Original Order 818, and Purified Pages, El's Quran 98-2 Original Order 100-2. The Suhuf had been passed on through the generations. After Abraham, son of Terah and Nuona, had received the last pages of the Suhuf, he in turn gave the complete set of 100 pure pages to his son Ishmael, son of Hagar. Thus, the Ishmaelites became the keepers of the Suhuf. Hagar, daughter of Imhotep and Rasa took Ishmael to the land of Kemet, Egypt, to her father in order to find a suitable wife for him. The Suhuf remained with them in Kemet, Egypt, until Amirul Muminin Ali, son of Abu Talib and Halima, and his wife Hadrat Fatima, daughter of Muhammad and Khadija went to Egypt. They were the best of the Ishmaelite family to receive the 100 pure pages. They traveled with the Suhuf to Sudan and remained there. In the year 1973 AD, the complete Suhuf was given to myself, Dr. Malachi Z. York, by my teacher and guide as Syed Mahmoud, while in Sudan. The second seal, Els Haikma, the Wisdom, Lukman, Lumim, received the 19 books in Syriac, Arabic, revealed in the year 1671 BCE. The Book of Wisdom consists of stories which provide the missing link to the scriptures by way of the elders. The information which you find from reading my doctrine that you are unaware of, as well as the names of people you weren't familiar with, have all come out of El Suhuf or El's Haikma. There is no one else here on this earth who knows of the newsbearers by way of the Book of Wisdom as I do. The actual Book of Wisdom is a sacred book in my possession, and I have been revealing parts of it to you throughout my scroll since 1970 AD. The Third Seal, El's Torah, the Laws, Tobit Anijah, Masha, Musa, Moses, received two books Genesis, revealed in the year 1512 BCE. Exodus, revealed in the year 1512 BCE, Leviticus, revealed in the year 1512 BCE, Harwan, Aharon, Aaron, received two books, Numbers, revealed in the year 1473 BCE, Deuteronomy, revealed in the year 1473 BCE, Yehoshua, Yeshua, Joshua, received the 34th chapter of Deuteronomy, revealed in the year 1473 BCE. The book of Genesis is a story about the generation of the people who inhabited the earth before Kodman, Adam, and who descended from the angelic beings, the Elohim, the Anunnaki, and who descended from them, the Enos, mortal man. Genesis, the replenishing, or reconstruction period is only describing the genealogy of the Elohim, the Adamites and the Enosites. The Adamites are a combination of the descendants of Kodman, Adam, Zakar, descendant of the Adamites, and Nekeba, Eve, Hawa, a descendant of the Tides. These Adamites spoke the language cuneiform, Adamic. These records kept on stone tablets, such as the Emina Elish, the Gilgamesh epics, Akkadian tablets, Atrahasis, tablet of the descent of Ishtar to the underworld, tablets of Nergal and Arishkegel, tablets of Adapa, tablets of Atana, and many others, are the sources of this scripture, Genesis. The Enuma Elish was recorded by the Elohim in the original language of the Elohim which is cuneiform. When it was taught to Adam, whose name to them was Kodman and used by his seed it became Adamic. El's Torah alone is virtually one of the most important scriptures revealed to man. It is not just an important account of the survival of the ancient Hebrews or Israelites, it is the only true scripture of the Elohim's teachings and laws to give guidance. 
The Torah is the only true scripture of the Old Testament, besides the book of Psalms El Zabur. The other books are what is termed as the books of the prophets. The fourth seal, El Zabur, the Psalms, Daud, David, recorded 73 Psalms, revealed in the year 1037 BCE, Shelem Ah, Solomon, recorded two Psalms, the sons of Korah recorded 12 Psalms, Asaph, recorded 12 Psalms, Ernan, recorded one Psalm, Ethan, recorded one Psalm, Masha, Moses, recorded one Psalm, revealed over a period from 1107 BCE 1007 BCE. This scripture was given to David who was 70 years old at the time, in the valley of Elah, in the land of Judah, 1037 BCE. Though it is listed as a part of the Old Testament, it is not. It was a separate scripture composed of prose and poems in the Asporic Syriac, Arabic, and Aramic, Hebrew, languages, which are one and the same. Many of the chapters of Psalms are in praise of the Creator for His gifts and mercy, they formed an integral part of the worship exercise of the children of Israel. The fifth seal, Kitab Barnabaa, Book of Barnabas, Barnabas, Jose's son of Joseph, received 222 books, revealed in the year 54 AD. The Gospel of Barnabas contains prophecies and truths that could not be altered, concerning the life and teachings of the Messiah Jesus. Unlike Paul, the false and thirteen self-appointed disciple, and some of the other disciples, Barnabas stayed strong in his faith and wrote a gospel as he was taught by his teacher, Almasi Isa or Ha Mashiach Yeshua. For these reasons, this version of Barnabas's account of the Messiah Jesus's life and ministry was removed from the so-called New Testament, and labeled apocryphal, hidden. This removal occurred by the decree of the Council of Nicaea, which convened in 325 AD, under Constantine, the first Christian emperor of Rome. The Council of Nicaea was organized to settle the difference of opinions pertaining to the scriptures. It indicated what should be taught in the church, sanctioning certain pagan ideas and customs. These pagan practices were disguised as the true teachings of the Messiah Jesus, incorporating instead, Paul's false doctrine of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, into the church. This is why the Gospel of Barnabas is no longer a part of the Bible today. However, I have made available the true English translation of the Gospel of Barnabas. The Sixth Seal, Elsingeal, Book of Revelation, Yao Canon, Yuana, John, received 22 books, revealed in the year 96 AD. The 22 books of Revelation of the Messiah Yeshua was received by the faithful and devoted Apostle John, son of Zebedee and Salome, in the year 96 AD, while on the island of Patmos. This book of prophecy was not meant to be overstood by John or the people of his time. The events which took place are the happenings of our present world condition. The book of Revelation can only be explained by one who possesses the key to unlock the seal, which will reveal the overstanding contained within the book. The seventh seal, Els Quran, the reading, Mustafa Muhammad Al-Amin received 114 books, revealed over a period of 22 years 610 AD to 632 AD. Els Holy Quran, was revealed by way of the Anunnaki Elohim Nusk, Gabriel, to Muhammad in the Quraysh dialect. The Quran was first inscribed in the heavens by the spiritual pen and recited by Nusk, Gabriel, to Muhammad. The Quran was in a perfect state before it was sent down. When Gabriel told Muhammad to read, he was telling him to read from this great book Amal Kitab, the mother of all scriptures. The Quran circulating today is not the original Quran. It has been tampered by the hands of mortal men who have changed the words of Allah, Eli. The original Quran, was in the dialect of the Quraysh tribe and was entrusted to Ali, the rightful Khalifa. The original Quran was taken and protected by Muhammad's true descendants in Sudan. After the original copies of the El's Holy Quran were burned at the order of Uthman, son of Afan ibn Abil Asi, false copies were distributed. Uthman, according to the Sunni sect, is the third recognized Khalifa, who is responsible for rearranging the chapters in the Quran. Anything unexplained in the previous scriptures like the Torah or Old Testament, is clarified in El's Holy Quran. Over a period of 22 years, the early revelations given to Muhammad while he was in Mecca were attractive, appealing chapters of universal truths that touched the listeners' hearts. These chapters were given to different clans, teaching them the rewards of giving up their traditions and taking on a new and right lifestyle. The later chapters dealt more with the problems and topics that arose as Islam spread. Moral lessons, obligations, principles, and methods of organizing a community were revealed to Muhammad in Medina. And I saw a strong Anunnaki Elohim, named Nusk, deity of light, who also bore the title Gabriel, son of Raziel and Zamel, calling out with a supreme voice saying, who is able to open the little scroll, and loose the seals and interpret the real meanings of the scriptures and the mother of books and reveal them. 
so there was no one in the Orion skies not even the elders, in the crystal city with all their advanced intellect, had the ability or authority to open the seven seals and no one upon the planet earth, no human being and not under the planet earth, located in the center of the earth in the city called Agarda, Wayala, or Sambala, not even the Dunakils, the Taros, the Flugelrods, the Daros, the Duwanis, nor the benevolent ones, could open the little scroll nor look into it. And I, the newsbearer John, son of Zebedee and Salome, cried very much because there was not anyone found worthy to open the little scroll, nor to look into it. And one of the elders, said to me, don't cry, look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the yielding seed of David, has prevailed to open the little scroll and to loose, break, the seven seals thereof. And I, the newsbearer bearer and John, son of Zebedee and Salome, saw that in the middle of the seat and the four living creatures, and also in the middle of the elders, there stood a lamb, who is Tammuz meaning sprout forth, sprout of life, as if he was sacrificed, it was made to look as if the Messiah Jesus was crucified, however it was just made to look that way, he had seven horns, symbolic of the power of the seven Anunnaki who are with him, and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of the Elohim Anunnaki sent to all the planet earth by Theos. So Tammuz, the Lamb, the HaMashiach Yeshua, came up and took the little scroll, which was the mother of books that is located in Elian, out of the right hand of Melchizedek, Murdoch, leader of the deities, supreme deity, who sat on the seat. And when he, the Lamb of the Most High called Tammuz, had opened the little scroll which is the mother of books located in Elian, the four living creatures representing Babylon, Greece, Rome, America and the 24 Agigi, elders, fell and prostrated before the Lamb, Malachi Zodok, Melchizedek, in recognition of his authority, power and rank. Each of the 24 Agigi, elders, had harps, which are lyres and a symbol of healing, and golden bowls filled with incense, which was made from a special mixture including frankincense reserved for burning in the temple only, also symbolic of the prayers or the worships of the Holy Ones, al quaitishan the Only Ones, al muklajana the Purified Ones, the Elite Few, the 144,000 who have purified themselves by keeping up Sila, worship of Anu, the Most High. The benefits of Sila yield purification of the mind and attunes the body with the soul and gives spiritual life to the body. And the 24 elders sang a new song, chanting, You, Ha Mashiach Yeshua is worthy, O Adonai, Rabbi, Curios Master, to take the little scroll, the mother of books containing all of the scriptures and loose or reveal the true meanings of the seals because you, the Lamb of Thehos were a willing sacrifice on an altar, not a cross, as a sign of atonement or forgiveness and has reclaimed us by your blood, symbolic of the fact that the Messiah Jesus was willing to be persecuted for his people, out of every tribe and of every tongue or language, and all other people who accept him in a nation of people. And you have made us come to our Eli, as rulers and priests, and we will rule upon the planet earth. And I, the newsbearer, John, son of Zebedee and Salome, looked and heard the voice of many Anunnaki Elohim around the seat of the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was thousands of thousands, too many to count. Saying with a supreme voice, worthy is the Lamb, the Messiah Jesus, who was a willing sacrifice, just so that he would get the power, and the wealth, and the wisdom, and the magnificence, and the honor, and the glory, and the blessing and all the created beings which are in the Ornos Orion skies, who are the Angelos or the Anunnaki, Elohim, the twenty-four elders, and the four living creatures, and upon the planet earth and under the planet earth, and such as are in the sea and who are in it. I, the newsbearer Yaukan and John, heard all of them together saying, Blessings and honor, and glory and authority be to him, Melchizedek, that sits upon the seat and the Lamb forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amon, and the twenty-four elders, fell on their faces and prostrated for him that lives forever and ever. Chapter 6. John envisions the appearance of one of the world empires. This marked the opening of the seven seals. The opening of the first seal, the white horse, symbolic of the Babylonian empire. And I, the newsbearer John, son of Zebedee and Salome, looked as the Lamb, the Messiah Jesus, was opening one of the seven stamps and what is contained in this seal is made clear from beginning, El Suhuf, to end, El's Quran, and I, the newsbearer Yaukanan, John, son of Zebedee and Salome, heard a roar, a sound, like a lion because of its courageous and fearlessness like thunder, which signaled the appearance of Babylon, one of the four living creatures of the four world empires, which appeared to be riding on horses who would conquer and hold control over a great part of the earth, having enormous power, saying, come and see it. This empire is ancient Babylon, the first major civilization. Babylon, the capital of this empire was founded by Nimrod, mighty warrior, son of Cush and Semiramis, the great-grandson of Utnapishtim, Noah. 
Babylon is also called Shinar, Flat Plains, Hammurabi was also a ruler of Babylon from 1800 to 1500 BC. He was responsible for a highly centralized government using a body of laws called the Code of Hammurabi, which is the oldest surviving set of laws known to mankind. The Code of Hammurabi are inscribed on a polished black diorite stele or pillar that stands seven and a half feet tall in Akkadian, cuneiform script. It is the largest cuneiform document ever discovered and is now located in the Louvre in Paris. The Second Age of Babylon was under the rule of Nebuchadnezzar II, from 605 to 562 BC. Then I, the newsbearer John, son of Zebedee and Salome, looked and there was a white horse, a cherubim, those who are close or nearest, that will bring the burdens or events destined to fall upon the planet Earth, being white to symbolize the weakness of the Caucasus Canaanites. He, Nimrod, carried a bow indicating he was a hunter, rode out as a conqueror of conquerors for he wanted to rule the whole world. And when the Lamb, Tammuz, the Messiah Jesus, opened the second stamp and what is contained in this seal is made clear from beginning, El Suhuf, to end, El's Quran. I, the newsbearer John, son of Zebedee and Salome, heard the second living creature, a calf called Master with an aggressive nature, symbolic of ancient Greece, say, come and see it. Greece was a lesser kingdom which prevailed after Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon. The Persian Empire, which called Iraq today, was in part responsible for the existence of the Kingdom of Greece. Because of existing tensions and burdens within its kingdom, this great empire became weak, consequently separating into lesser kingdoms. This division produced even lesser kingdoms, which later became territories of the Greek Empire. Thus, this kingdom being represented by a calf explains the nature of it rising from a split, occurring in a preceding empire, therefore being considered inferior because it could not compare to the Babylonian empire in power, strength, and glory. Then another horse went forth which was red, which tells how ancient Greece came into power. It symbolizes bloodshed and death. Alexander the Great invaded Babylon defeating a Persian cavalry all with his sword. Alexander the Great, the king of Macedonia, was the ruler of this ancient kingdom north of Greece. Alexander the Great conquered more territories than his predecessor Cyrus. Alexander the Great spread Greek civilization throughout Asia and Egypt. And when Tammuz the Messiah Jesus opened the third seal, and what is contained in this seal is made clear from beginning, El Suhuf, to end, El's Holy Quran, I, the newsbearer John, son of Zebedee and Salome, heard the third living creature with the face of Satan, who is also called Zuan, the evil one, reptilian Shakur or Tarnash, Satanas in the form of a male living being, symbolic of the Roman Empire saying, come and see it. And there was a black horse which represented the conflict between Rome and the Nubians of Carthage, whose most illustrious leader and warrior was Hannibal, son of Hamelik or Barca. And its rider, Gaius Julius Caesar had with him a scale which was the Roman Empire's numbering system, used for measuring in his right hand. And I, the newsbearer John, son of Zebedee and Salome, heard the voice of the Lamb, Tammuz, the Messiah Jesus, in the middle of the four living creatures saying, a measure of wheat for a penny, give the nation of people what they earn, and don't touch the oil and don't touch the intoxicants, most frequently drank by the Romans. And when, the Lamb, Tammuz, the Messiah Jesus, opened the fourth stamp, and what is contained in this seal is made clear from beginning, El Suhuf, to end, El's Quran, and I, the newsbearer John, son of Zebedee and Salome, heard the voice of the fourth living creature, the eagle symbolic of the USA, the new Babylon saying, come and see it. And I, the newsbearer John, son of Zebedee and Salome, looked and there was a pale horse, a pale yellow colorless complexion, symbolic of weakness, a dying empire that will collapse and never rise again, its rider, the presidents or leaders, the many governors, ambassadors, military, police, militia, and senators, all representing corruption and destruction, was named death because they are killers in many fashions of all kinds of living creatures in Hades, which hell, follows near behind for after this last empire America falls, only hell follows. These nations killed by way of swords in wars, hunger, famine and with death by diseases, and with the beast of the planet earth. And when the Lamb, the Messiah Jesus, Tammuz meaning, sprout of life, sprout forth as a faithful son, open the fifth stamp, and what is contained in this seal is made clear from beginning, El Suhuf, to end, El's Quran. I, the newsbearer John, son of Zebedee and Salome, saw under the altar used for sacrifice, the souls of those who had successfully passed on to the next life, and for the witness which they held, because they died bearing witness to the truth of the righteous newsbearers of El Elo who came proclaiming, and for believing in Yeshua Elo as the Messiah and having faith that he would return. And the righteous of all time cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Adonai, Lord, Master, Holy One, the Most High, Eli, 
and the one who is a fact beyond any doubt, will it be until you pass judgment and bring Satan, Halal, the evil one, reptilian Nakash, Canas in the flesh to judgment and avenge and punish them for shedding our blood for killing us, those Canaanites who live on the planet earth and kills the righteous just because they are righteous. And wear white robes, outer garments, the garb, of the Dinier, righteous ones of the rocket ship, were given to each of them as a symbol that they will be with the 24 elders, because they have overcome and returned to Lahud, the realm of El Elo, Allah, Yahweh, Anu, the Most High, Thihos, and it was said to the 24 elders, rest a little season while longer, from the year 1970 AD, to the year 2000 AD, until the number of the 144,000 pure souls are raised and until their fellow servants who had been killed, the lost seat of the house of Ishmael. All of these faithful nations of people wore the white robes of the righteous and were willing to sacrifice their lives. And I, the newsbearer John, son of Zebedee and Salome, looked when the Lamb, the Messiah Jesus, opened the sixth stamp, and what is contained in this seal is made clear from beginning, El Suhuf, to end, El's Quran, there was a violent earthquake, the great earthquake of the state of California that is to come, and the many occurring since the one in Turkey on March 29, 1970 AD, which marked the prophecy of the seventh seal, the sun became black from the solar eclipse on October 3, 1986 AD, and the moon became as blood. A lunar eclipse occurs at the anti-solar point on the heavens precisely opposite the sun, so the moon must be illuminated at a 180 degree angle being perfectly full, the moon buries itself fully in Earth's shadow and turns red not black, except on rare occasions, because the planet sun rises and appears to set, yet refracts their ruddy light into the shadow. Because of the lunar eclipse of October 17, 1986 AD, the next solar eclipse happened in the year 2000 AD. The stars, which were the 29 comets sighted, signaling the opening of the seventh seal in 1970 AD, especially Bennett on March 16, 1970 AD, and Halley's Comet in 1986 AD, and this is how astronomers logged it, the year 1970 was a record year. There were 29 comets observed. There were five new near-parabolic and two new periodic comets, 11 recoveries of periodic comets, two comets from 1968 and 1969. Four of these comets were naked eye objects. 1970 will be remembered for a spectacular object comet called Bennett 1970. The true story of Bennett is that we arrived in 1970 AD. They knew little of our natures, and out of their ignorance called us comets. We shone brightly against the inky blackness of the heavens, leaving long, luminous tails, scores of light years behind us. My light shone the brightest, so they called me Bennett, the bright star. I followed my orbit, which curved in a parabola around the sun, to a distance within their range of vision. They charted our passing March 16, 1970, as one of the most spectacular stellar events they had ever seen witnessed. There were 29 of us all together, the year of the opening, 1970 AD. We had been dispatched into the universe to clean up the filth incurred by men. Five of us were new and had been assigned two masters as guides. Eleven of our team had been to Earth at a prior date, as a pre-visual to me. There were two others who had made the journey two years before in 1968, and another eight who had come in 1969. Then there was one more of the 29 of us, only four were destined to be seen by the eyes of men. The rest would pass unnoticed, carrying out the command, doing a very necessary job. Major Comets Tycho Brahe, 1577, Humason, 1961, Bela, 1772, Ikea Seki, 1965, Anka, 1786, Bennett, 1970, Donati, 1858, Halley's Comet, 1986, Great Comet, 1882, Hyatake, 1995 and Tunguska, 1908. Since the sighting of these comets there had been a steady decline in world conditions. Bombs, missiles and large shells of the wars such as Vietnam, Lebanon, Grenada, Iran, Iraq, and Bosnia, fell from the Orion skies like figs falling from the unripe tree. The newsbearer John also saw this unripe tree shaken by a mighty wind, describing a natural disaster such as a hurricane, cyclones, tidal waves, or tornadoes, etc., and the Orion skies rolled up just like a little scroll of my, John's, son of Zebedee and Salome, day which was made of papyrus roll or scroll, when it rolled together. And every mountain out of its place from the smallest of pebbles to the greatest mountains and islands were overturned. Then the rulers of the planet Earth and the great men and the rich, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, all of the popes, ambassadors, presidents, governors, prime ministers, etc., and slaves who work for them, and the freemen will try to hide themselves in their homes and in the rocks of mountains called apartment buildings, or complexes. 
Man has spent billions of dollars each year in researching methods of survival through what may result in a nuclear holocaust. He has constructed underground cities, not to be mistaken with Sambala and Agarda, the cities beneath the earth that was formed by the west wind of Nibiru, which tore into the center of the planet earth, which at that time was called Tiamat, exploded and made a hollow space in the center of Tiamat. The west wind became a 600 mile diameter sun called Apsu and was trapped in place, there and sustains the life of the inner world. These underground cities are constructed as special wartime shelters, complete with three-story buildings, streets, lakes, computers, etc., located 40 miles west of the White House under the Appalachian foothill called Mount Weather, and one located at Fort Ritchie MD, and Colorado Springs Omaha. And the great men of this world said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us. Man will hope to hide from Eli but this will be impossible, from the face of him, Malachi Zodok, leader of the deities, supreme deity, that is sitting on the seat of the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, the Messiah Jesus, known in ancient times as Tammuz. The great day, the end of the world of his wrath has come, and which of you can stand against it, no one can stop it.